Ready, people? Ready? Ready. Awesome. Hi. Uh, this is going to be called uh, Joomla and the Bud Boys, or uh, how to start playing ukulele in a few simple steps. My name is Peter, Peter Gramantic, and uh, let me introduce myself a little bit more. Uh, who am I? Uh, I'm asking this quite often, because uh, I was born in Slovakia, now living in Czech Republic, working for a US-based company, and uh, I've learned to speak Slovak, of course, in Czech, uh, English is not so good. But anyway, I'm here and I'm going to present you uh, a little bit uh, from, does it change? Yeah, it change. So, I'm a musician. Uh, I'm a musician and uh, that's why I choose uh, that I'm going to show you how to, play, how to start playing ukulele in a few little bits. Yeah, really. I uh, sorry for that. But I was there and the, the show was awesome, really. Clapping my hands. Uh, anyway, I play guitar, I play ukulele, uh, but that's not why I'm here. Uh, I originally wanted to come uh, on my Harley Davidson bike because I live here in Czech Republic in Brno, but unfortunately I broke my finger, so I was not able. Pity. Uh, the main reason why I'm here is uh, that I'm a senior malware researcher in uh, Sukuri, and uh, I guess you already know what Sukuri is, what company is it, right? Anybody who doesn't know? Everyone else, that's awesome, because usually when I'm asking on the conf conferences, only few hands are raising up, oh, only few people know what Sukri is and who we are. It's awesome that all of you knew, know already. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, Tony, thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, something about myself and uh, my history. Uh, I spent eight years in uh, AVG Antivirus, maybe you know it, uh, as a malware researcher as well. And after that, I left Microsoft, and, uh, and after that, I started with Sukuri. And I'm really enjoying it here, because uh, it's two years already. Time's running fast, <laughs> really fast. Uh, anyway, uh, something a little, little more about us. Uh, you already know the guy on the right. It's Tony standing over there. He's our C uh, CEO, and uh, he's the best presenter i ever seen, really. Uh, guy on the left uh, is Daniel Sid, a uh, brilliant technical mind, uh, who is my direct boss. And uh, he's probably watching me, or he will be watching me as well. Uh, we, we make our business uh, because of security. We are securing people's sites and we are help helping people. Uh, that's it. And uh, we provide complex website security uh, system services, products. But uh, Tony already said everything, I, I guess. Well, uh, what I am doing in, in uh, our company, uh, I'm a malware researcher, so I'm researching malware. That's obvious. Uh, I'm digging deep inside the code and uh, checking it every day and uh, trying to find out what's wrong and or what's good as well. I'm trying to identify malware sources uh, and blacklisting sites. Sometimes there are over hundreds or thousand, even some thousand sites, and one blacklist, yeah, because of me, I'm that guy. Anyway, uh, while analyzing infections, uh, I'm trying to go as deep as possible, in, uh, deep in the code, because of uh, sometimes it's not, it's not easy to determine whether something is malware or is not. And uh, also, I'm, do, I'm helping my, my colleagues on the remediation team with cleaning up sites, uh, because of, Time to time, uh, it's so so complex and so hard to uh, remove the infection and find out what is causing it that uh, they need to escalate to me. And I'm keeping in touch with uh, with the real world. I'm not all the time in, in the in the code, but I'm really cleaning sites almost every day. And yeah, I'm seeing a lot of Joomla. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of WordPress. I'm seeing a lot of a lot of Drupal. And this is this is something. What I wanted, wanted to mention, I don't like content management systems. <laughs> sorry, for his, sorry for saying that. Because, you know, uh, when something is used, uh, it's going to be compromised, probably. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm helping people. Uh, we, with our colleagues, uh, are part of uh, communities, and uh, we are going through various forums and trying to, trying to help people for free. Yeah, sure, because of people matters. That's it. Sorry. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what is going this presentation be about? Uh, it's going to be about, uh, uh, the, yeah, show review. What's going on in my world? In fact, it's not my world completely. It's yours world. It's a world of our clients. It's every, everyone's world. We share. We share it. We live in it. Yeah. Uh, security problems affect everyone. From from developers through clients uh, and us as malware fighters as well. Can you imagine uh, after some outbreak of uh, some vulnerability? Can you imagine the queues? Everybody is sitting and solving tickets. Me, Tony, even Tony, the CEO. Yeah. Everybody. We are working and uh, helping people to clean their sites. Uh, we are on the same boat. Uh, because we are not enemies. Some people think uh, that we we are corrupting or uh, we are destroying business of developers because of we are releasing vulnerabilities and uh, we are saying, oh yeah, this extension or uh, this plugin was compromised, hurry up and uninstall it or so. No, that's not true. We are not enemies. We are on the same boat. And uh, I want to ask you, don't be afraid of us because uh, we should we should cooperate. That's it. We are here to help. And of course, uh, it will be about uh, real world examples. Uh, I'm going to show you how real Marvel malware looks like. It will be hopefully interesting. Yeah. So uh, this presentation is not going to be about being paranoid. Why for why to be paranoid? I I already are. Anybody else here paranoid? Congratulations, congratulations, guys. It's not about using strong password, changing password on an everyday basis. Uh, I hope you're already doing this. It's not about using SFT, uh, SFTP or SSH instead of plain FTP. I'm sure you are already using, doing that, right? Are you? Really? Everyone? Hopefully. Yeah, using multiple security layers. <laughs> <laughs> having backups uh, and simply all these things those are those are the basics the basic of security and uh, I'm not going to, to talk about them because of I hope that everyone are keeping that in mind and that we are protecting ourselves right because it's impacting business a lot if you are going compromised you are going to lose uh, the trust and Lost trust is a terrible thing, trust me. So, uh, what's going on uh, from my point of view as a malware researcher? Yeah, Tony in the morning gave you nice, brilliant, big picture what's going on in, in, the, in large scale. But what's going on from, from my point of view as a malware researcher? Times are changing. There are no more script kiddies who are going to infect your site, or no, in fact, deface your site. Just let a simple note, hey, I hacked your site. Just write, write me an email. I'm going to tell you how. This no more happens. Uh, these ethical hackers or idealistic hackers are almost almost they almost died, all of them. Nowadays it's about it's about uh, professional teams, and these teams uh, they are really good programmers. They are good developers who are who are knowing what they are doing, and they are doing incredible incredibly. Uh, big piece of code, and uh, it's uh, tough to, to decode and tough to uh, go through it because it's really good. They are good, and how how is it possible that they are so good? They are paid for it, right? It's about really professional business players, and uh, it's all about money, money and politics. Right. Maybe maybe you remember uh, the, all those defacements, like uh, that. That is politics, right? Uh, some group is uh, leaving a message on, on your side that please leave our uh, leave our brothers. We are political group this and this, and we deface your side because of political reason. It's politics on one hand, money on the other hand. But in the end, you will you will notice that it sticks together because of we see it every day that uh, they are leaving backdoors on these defied sites 
and uh, these sites are spreading spam, are doing other, other things. It's not about politics. It's a big lie. It's about money, really. It's about money. And, uh, of course, uh, pharma hacks. And uh, I noticed recently that uh, hackers are more and more uh, using your sites as a storage. You don't know. One, one day your site is clean. Another day your site is st still clean. Or at least you see nothing on it. Nothing suspicious. But there's plenty of uh, spam files uh, which, are, which are pointed to from other sites as links. And it's buried deep in your structure. If you are not so lucky, you won't ever notice this until, until you are going to be blacklisted or so. That's how it works nowadays. Uh, Blackhead CEO, uh, etc. high ranks, <laughs> yeah. Uh, everybody, everybody is doing, doing it for business nowadays, and it doesn't matter, doesn't matter that you don't see it on your site. It's very deep, deep inside, deep in your structure. Um, what I'm seeing, where could be the problems, uh, is the, as I said, the more something is used, uh, the more it gets attacked. Uh, for Joomla, it's a huge success that it got millions of users. Millions of sites are using Joomla, actually. Congratulations for the developers, for the extension developers. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Clap in my hands. But yeah, <laughs> great success. But great success means great power. You are, you've got power over those people, over the people which are using Joomla and the extensions. And you know what comes with great power. Great responsibility. Great responsibility. That's it. Exactly. So you are, in fact, responsible for these, for these people who are uh, using your products. You are building their sites on, a, on a Joomla. And uh, the biggest problem, why these people are getting infected most of times, is they are outdated. Yeah, outdated. I know that you are releasing fixes. You are trying to fix uh, problems, code. Everybody makes mistakes, even me. Uh, but why the people are not updating? Why? I've been at a conference some time ago, uh, and it was aimed on people, on, on normal users, clients, uh, website owners, and so on. And I was asking them, why people? Why are you not updating? Oh no! I asked them, "Do you update?" Raise your hand. Who is updating? Almost nobody. Yeah, I, I know you are updating. <laughs> we were talking yesterday, <laughs> but I was I was scared, man. They, those people are really not updating. But why? So why are you not updating? Because it doesn't work. Yeah, that word. There was an F word. What doesn't work? Well, my site doesn't work after update. Oh. And that's it. They are scared. Very often they are lazy. And they are, let's say, they are, want to keep the status quo. Like, OK, my site is working. Uh, yeah, there is some, some update. I even don't know that there is some update. But it's working. Why to update? Later. And simply, uh, I guess, my, my, my idea is it's up to you to explain them that they should update, that they shouldn't be scared, and uh, that they they should do it on a, on a, not everyday basis but on a regular basis. Uh, you should prove them that uh, if they update, it won't corrupt their sites, it won't corrupt their templates, it won't corrupt their business because very often they are they, their sites are their business, right? So this is what I think uh, is the big problem and where the responsibility lies. Also, hmm, when, uh, when there's such, such an outdated uh, site, uh, there's nothing, uh, <laughs> nothing easier than going to some, let's say, market. Oh, I'm going to market. I'm going to uh, buy bread. I'm going to buy uh, butter and, uh, and this, uh, this exploit. For this vulnerability, for this Joomla version, and this extension. Like they, do, they are doing it every day. When you, when you are going to open a site, you can, you can get uh, exploits for, for Joomla uh, plugins, extensions, and uh, Joomla itself for free. And there are, of course, another market when they are going to pay for it. 
And that's the business. I return, always return to business because it's the reason for 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 today's uh, malware problems are money. It's multi-million business, dollar business, right? So please tell tell your clients or customers or whoever uh, to update. Please, please, please. Uh, we are not the enemies. Uh, I've been facing many times to, uh, to clients and even the, even the developers who were almost shouting shouting at me. Hey, man, why are you detecting us? It's a false positive. There's nothing wrong in our code. Or, oh, my site is not not infected. But it was it was right. But uh, in case of those false false positives, uh, yeah, that happens. As I said, everybody makes mistakes. We are try we are doing hard to avoid mistakes. In our terminology, to avoid false positives. And uh, I think <laughs> that it's necessary to understand us and our point of view. We, we are not happy uh, when we find a serious vulnerability. We don't want you to make mistakes. Uh, we've got enough things to do, right? Uh, we will have enough things to do in a year as well, in 10 years, because of all those, all those professional malware teams, malware creator teams. And uh, if you are going to uh, make serious vulnerabilities and uh, they are not going to be fixed in some time maintenance or ASAP, uh, you are going to help these, these folks. And you are going to create more work for us. Yeah, but that's kind of, kind of unfortunate work. Because really, uh, we are not enjoying that. And every time we find a vulnerability, every time we are given a chance for the developer to fix it, to prove uh, that, that he can act fast, and uh, to inform his clients. And after that, yeah, we release a blog post about the vulnerability, how it happened, what happened exactly, deep in the code, and uh, describe what's going on. But Prior to uh, releasing this, this blog post, uh, there's a process uh, during which uh, you should release a fix. You should tell your clients that they should really update. And unfortunately, um, I was seeing cases when uh, when we we got even no response to uh, to such information to developer, or we were just ignored, or somebody somebody was shouting at me. Hey, don't don't release anything. I'm taking care of it myself. Well, people deserve to be informed. Informed, but as I said, uh, we should cooperate and we should. We are on the same boat. We are not the enemies. Um, yeah. The point I, I want to emphasize is that when we are going to find where we are. We found some vulnerability, and we are going to inform the developer. And after some time, even the public, um, we are usually finding it uh, in the wild, based on the on the <laughs> analysis of already infected site. It's already happened. It already happened. Somebody already uses this vulnerability. So that's why that's why it's really important to make it fast, make it happen, like tomorrow or the day after. Yeah, there, there, there is no, no other week or two weeks or month to release some, some critical update. ASAP, that's time matters. That's it. And now the false positive, yeah. Uh, I know, it happens. And I admit it, uh, I'm here, I'm senior malware researcher, and I am personally am responsible for, for that, time to time. I'm just a human making errors. I'm terribly sorry, myself. But if you if you observe something like this that you are detected, uh, please let me know or let us know. There is a, there is a uh, our mail labs at security.net. Let us know that uh, some, something went wrong, uh, and let me explain you uh, how this could happen. Uh, if you are going to write a, a nice code, perfectly shaped. Uh, if you are following some coding structure, and uh, uh, if if the code is simply beautiful, 
I can tell you for 99 persons that you are not going to be detect detected as a false positive. It's on the one hand uh, a single line file where, which is included somewhere in a, in a legitimate script, and it, it's just crab of one line, obfuscated everything. Uh, included when I when I saw it, I said, "Hell, what is this? It's malware." Then I decoded it, and it turned out oh, it, it was not malware. But you know that there were so many signs of of it being malware that we reported it right. On the other hand, there is perfectly written uh, malware. Even malware creators learned to use headers, comments, at least plugin name and version, even when it's fake. <laughs> and they, they got less detections. Why? Because they look good. That's, that's so simple. Make it simple. Make it nice. You won't be de detected. I can't promise for, for sure for, for 100%, but for 99%, almost. Uh, and if, if you had uh, false positives uh, with us in the past, just uh, let us know uh, when you are going to uh, release a new version or, or so. Just ping us. Like, hey, guys, we are going to release a new version. We don't want, we want to avoid any problems. So could you check it? And we can check. And we, we tell you, oh, sure, we don't detect anything. Or at least send us, uh, I don't know, a list of hashes. If you, uh, if you think uh, you don't want to provide us uh, with, your, with your premium extension, uh, OK, don't do it. Just provide us with a list of hashes. Uh, we are not going to whitelist it. But the files are going to be added to white set, which is going to be used in, a, in QR process before releasing an update. And that is, that is important. And in case of those hashes, uh, and in case of false positive in the future, we can quickly check, oh, the hash is same. So this looks like to be filed really from, from, from the developer, from, from the crea creator of this piece of code. That's a, that's not, that doesn't mean it's, it's clean for sure. But it's a huge flag that it's probably OK. And again, it, it help us, help us to uh, make things faster, react faster. And uh, <laughs> in fact, uh, we are this way we are sparing your time. We are sparing even our time. And after all, uh, we've got so, so many of spare time that we can improving our ukulele, right? Oh, I, I saw raising he hats, it's nice. Am I boring? Hopefully not. Uh, let's go uh, to the almost last, uh, last uh, point of my presentation. But before that, uh, obfuscation. Is there anybody in this room who is obfusc obfuscating his code? One. Uh, to explain, I've got nothing against obfuscation. Obfuscation is good uh, if you want to protect uh, your code, uh, which, you, which you developed and uh, in tears and blood and probably black magic. And uh, yeah, you are protected by obfuscation. Uh, believe me, I can go through almost any obfuscation in a script uh, within minutes. Within seconds, probably. Uh, so, so are the cra so are crackers able to do so? But right? those are smart guys. And uh, if somebody is going to crack your plugin, he's going to be he's going to crack it, and it, he will go through the obfuscation. Yeah, I know that you you can uh, you can hide, let's say uh, those those free texts like this plugin is for free, and if you want to disappear this text, you have to pay us one dollar or, or less. Uh, that's okay. Uh, as I said, obfuscation is okay. But again, try to make make it in shape. Try to uh, do it beautiful. Make it beautiful. That's it. Oh, and uh, don't use free, free services. Uh, about two months ago or three months ago, I wrote a blog post uh, about the free service. This is the real name of my blog post. Why a free obfuscator is not always free. Uh, we have we had an interesting case of uh, several client sites which were infected, and they were they were displaying spam. And we were not able to find where where is the spam coming from. 
so I had to, had to dig it deep in. Uh, it was not malvertising. Sorry. It was not anything else. It was not server level compromises infection. And we were desperate. And then I not I really noticed this uh, that the, there were similar plugins used uh, on the sites and or extensions uh, and they were using a free obfuscator. So I deobfuscated the code, it looked legitimate. I did a bit more and found one line of code which is free obfuscator edit to your obfuscated code. You go to site, add your normal code there and it returns uh, returns an obfuscated code for you, right? Okay, but in the end, your site is infected. There were two layers of obfuscation. Under the first layer, there was your code obfuscated and the malicious code. And in the second layer was your original code. Everything worked, yeah. Only they added something more. And they were displaying spam on like every third day, uh, only when the moon was full and uh, probably only for Android and iOS and so on. Uh, it was really tough. <laughs> Don't use free services and verify what are you uh, what was the outcome if you are going to use such service. <sighs> ah, malware, malware, that's my world. Uh, everybody thinks that malware looks li like this. Yeah, it looks almost like this. Uh, it's... Uh, weird and it's uh, hard to be read it and uh, it's really complex and it could look like this yeah this is malware actual backdoor which is really simple and probably most simple uh, most short malware in the world php malware evil post variable name right so this is can you imagine that this is uh, buried deep, deep in your code, and somewhere uh, between the thousands of lines of your code? Oh yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry for that. But I, I'm glad that, that you see the point, <laughs> and that you are actually keeping attention. <laughs> That's cool. Anyway, anyway, can you imagine that it was buried deep inside your code between thousands of lines? It's almost unnoticeable. Oh yeah, I won't harm you. I, I won't harm you. It's a little small. Uh, I'll release my, my uh, slides after presentation so you can uh, see it on your own. Uh, this is a common mistake, and uh, this is why why several clients were shouting on me. Hey, you cleared my files. They were absolutely clear. They were not infected. They were no, they were not. Word wrap. Nothing else. Same file. Word wrap. Actually, uh, this was uh, this was a backdoor which I wanted uh, which I want to. Uh, uh, show you a little bit more, but uh, I found something much better. To be able to uh, understand uh, attackers, uh, we need to mention these points. Yeah, what, what, how they are thinking? What's the process of on, of infecting something? Identify, identify point of entry. Yeah, the weakness. Exploit the entry, or they go to the shop. They by the bread, eggs, milk, and exploit. And they have to ensure that they can retain access and cover their tracks. Well, uh, I've got one really nice malware, uh, and it's completely Joomla M malware, which is which was really perfect. Uh, hopefully you can see this. Uh, this was the code, this was the original code which we found. And this was the infected code. Uh, can you see the difference? Probably yes. But it was, it was really hard to spot it uh, from scratch. It's this. Yeah. Uh, those were 304 bytes of code added by, by an attacker to a valid file. It was hard, hard to spot. 
and uh, it uh, resulted in uh, in being able to upload the backdoor to the to the client side. This going through through every every security measure, just upload the file, lose the backdoor, and do whatever they want. Let me explain how this happened. Yeah, this is this is the change. 304 bytes. Uh, easy and simple. Uh, it's all about it's all about this format variable, uh, which is using a Joomla Joomla function get extension, right? Let's uh, let's uh, take a look on this on this extension. All it does is uh, it breaks a file name a file name into pieces and uh, returns returns the extension. How could we how could we make this uh, function to return false? This one, yeah, add in a training dot dot in the end. So uh, after after uh, the code was was uh, modified this way, uh, the can upload function uh, will check if the extension is part of the other ones or not, and by adding these two additional conditions, uh, it will upload the file even if the uh, if the format variable is false or is empty. So these were these were three uh, three conditions uh, divided by by or operator, which means uh, that oh it's kind of out of out of the screen doesn't matter. Uh, I told it already, empty, false, or the allowed extension. Uh, but uploading a backdoor.php dot will not do the job. You are not able to run such, uh, such a file. You are not able to use it. So uh, is it the end or the drama? No. Because uh, there is another Joomla function. Make safe. Can you can you read uh, can you read the comment? Remove any trailing dots as those aren't even valid file names. And that's it. This function removed the dot, and we had backdoor.php, which is usable, which you can run, and your system is compromised. Uh, yeah. You need to think about, uh, yeah, it was it was perfect perfect example of uh, of uh, how attackers are thinking. They are they are going through the code, they are thinking about it, and uh, the features which are intended to be good, and are, they are still good, they can uh, just misuse and uh, use them for for their purposes to compromise their site. And there's a beautiful blog post about, about this on our blog site. Uh, that's, that's the conclusion. Ethicers are smart. They are reading code and uh, they, they simply know what they are doing. And they are better and better every day. And as I know you are hungry, this is the end. So uh, if you are interested, go to our blog, please. And uh, even you can let us comment and let us know uh, what you like or what you dislike. Uh, you can visit even our labs site. Uh, where we find uh, another, I guess, pretty interesting inf information about malware. Uh, and of course, enjoy Prague and, and check beer. I personally don't like personal Quell. It's generally considered the best one, right? And if, yeah, sure, I'm going to play. <laughs> no, no, the, the real conclusion of this uh, that we can, we can save so lot of time just by doing things properly. That we can use this spare time even for playing ukulele or starting to play ukulele, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Do you really want it? Yes. Can you sing it?
somewhere over the rainbow birds fly and the dream that you dream so why oh why can I I, I, I. <laughs> thank you And of course, if anyone has a question, any questions? Yeah. Sure. Uh, we're always talking about you know, systems updating your website. Sometimes I wonder if we're kind of uh, thinking about it the wrong way. When users have a car, they take them to the garage to have main page and everything. So maybe they should be doing the same thing with their website. If they want to have a main page, they should be like, uh, well, the, the website builder should be there or should be yep. hired to maintain the website and give it updated and keep it secure. Uh, sure. So That's basically, of course, it's excellent point. It's excellent point. Oh, could you please re repeat the question? Or oh, I should repeat the question. Like, uh, <laughs> okay, why why users should update uh, and why why the one the one who is uh, managing their site is not doing that? Yeah. Uh, sometimes sometimes they don't have anyone else. Sometimes nobody else is managing their sites, and I agree. If somebody is managing their sites, they should uh, they should uh, do that for them. Or there's another possibility, but still, updating is very necessary. Uh, you can go through our <laughs> through our firewall. I don't want to advertise it, but there's virtual patching. You can stick in uh, stick with the old version, and our firewall will do it for you. That's it. <laughs> yeah, so, so to your point, right, your, your question is, why do we change the perception? Exactly. Right? Why, why are we focusing so much on the core group versus on the masses? Yeah, it, it's, an it's impractical, right? There's too many of them. And in reality, unlike a car, where I have to get into my car to drive to my office to go somewhere, they don't feel the same in their site. What they focus on is, how do I get my content out? How do I get my website up? It's my virtual representation. What they don't think about is, oh, I'm using Joomla. Oh, I'm using Google. Oh, I'm using the CMS. It's fundamentally not the way they think. So you're right, we could educate them and spend more time, but it's a lot easier to focus on a much smaller group and figure out how do we address the update problem than to go to the millions of users that don't care what car they're using. Now, the one thing that we're talking about is never with the website development. You don't sell the customer website, you sell them the website plus support afterwards. So you're responsible to have hired somebody already from the start and not after the fact. Understood. But it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a much larger issue, right? There's millions of users out there that don't even understand the technology that they're leveraging for their sites. Like they, to try to communicate to that is very challenging. You focus on a small niche group like this and send the people that have the ability to influence the platform and come up with a solution that better address it. Because what it comes down to is that it affects the brand of the platform, yeah. regardless if the user does it or not. So what is the easiest way to address that? Is it to go to the millions of users that don't care about the platform, or to go to the people that really care about it, that invest their energy and their, their emotions into it to get it right? And I would argue that yes, what I would love to focus and make them aware of it, it's a lot easier to focus at this level where we can make a bigger impact. See, he's much better than me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, congratulations, Tony. Yeah. So if a content management system starts saying like, okay, sure it is that, but you also have to maintain it, you also have to make it secure because your brand gets killed every time there's an hour on your site. That, that, Strangely enough, WordPress is doing that quite well right now, although it's more the most insecure platform. Yeah, it's your point is absolutely, like, you're, you're right. And that is a big challenge in the world of WordPress when you use it as a is we have to change the way we communicate what it is to get online. When you get online, that's one aspect of it. We have to stop saying, get online, it's free, it's easy, you have no more responsibility. That's the wrong message. We have to be saying, and WordPress has they should be in charge, only 25, 25, 25% of the shares. They should be, they should run that, right? Yeah. And so, 
<laughs> so um, I agree with you 100%. There is that messaging that has to change. Yeah. WordPress has an auto feeder that allows them to easily push out. Yeah. Security issue, okay, push a fix. Yeah. And I think that that should be in every continental system. Yes, yeah. and that's what I was getting at. That's what I was getting at this morning in terms of patch management. Patch management. I think that there's a lot more that, at least in the Joomla community, that we can do, right, about backwards compatibility in terms of providing some kind of upgrade path. In our environment, we have a tremendous number of Joomla users that are running 1x, 2x, that are still have a tremendous number of vulnerabilities that they can't get out of because they have no upgrade path. But at the same time, we don't provide some kind of upgrade mechanism or patchy mechanism, like saying, hey, I know you can't upgrade. I completely understand that. You don't have an upgrade path. But let me provide you some patching mechanism to ensure like, if a serious vulnerability comes out, you're being protected. Yeah. And that is one thing, whether we like it or not, that WordPress has done that is being effective. And they can push out virtual or uh, up, auto updates to their environment in hours, in minutes, in some instances. And, and that's very effective. And, 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 I, and I think Sucuri actually has a WordPress plugin that, 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 has, that kind of goes hand in hand with that as well. Yeah, it doesn't do virtual patching. The, the, our plugin that we have um, in, um, in WordPress is specific for auditing and maintenance and, and kind of accountability of what's happening. We do some integrity checks, things like that, but we don't do the auto updates like what you're seeing from the core team pushing out in WordPress. But I think that is something that uh, Joomla could look at. So could you inject Joomla into WordPress? Say again? Can you check Joomla into WordPress and that way have an update? No. Because we're completing new website tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Once we finish the API. Yeah. <laughs> okay, anyway, thanks guys. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. Um, thank you. See you.